That should be interesting. Well, that should be interesting. <laughs> hey there, friends. Hi, good to see you. Welcome to another wonderful episode here at the Beep Mobile. Nice. Nice sound effects. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Today's a big day. We are putting, we're gonna start to set down the foundation of our counter. This is exciting. This is all about the kitchen counters situated directly underneath our DIY skylights for tall people that go around the curve right next to the bathroom with the sweet curved wall. I don't know if you've noticed yet, but we kind of have a curved theme going on. Well, the bus is like super masculine, straight formation. So we're adding a little female balance. Yeah, this thing is definitely gonna be dainty and it's gonna be rugged all at the same time. You got that right. Yeah, so this is actually just the framing. We're gonna frame out the cupboards, um, make sure they're situated where we want them. We're not quite yet working on the actual sweet counter, but- The countertop. The countertop. But we wanna make sure we get everything in place so that we can start running plumbing and electrical and all that stuff. Yeah, so you're gonna to wanna to keep watching because what we do with these little bitty flanges and stubs sticking off the ground, it's gonna be something pretty fun. We're making a floater. Floater. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get to it. Time to get the little footies ready. So for this project, we've got ear pro, eye pro. I don't know why ear pro for this, but it's gonna get loud in here. Um, eye pro, booties, and mechanic gloves, cause these are greasy. They grease them up so that they don't get rusty while sitting on the shelf waiting for plumbers to come scoop them up. So what we're gonna do is take a degreaser. Pretty sure this is simple green. It's been a while since we mixed it. Um, what I'm gonna do is spray them down like so, Whoop. and give them a little rubber rooney with a dirty old t-shirt. And I'm gonna do that with everything before we spray paint them and let them dry before you spray paint them. Um, but yeah, these should be really cool. We're going for a little bit of an industrial, rustic meets dainty look, so this should be awesome. I'm just gonna set these out how I'm going to spray them. Um, I'll just have these guys standing straight up like this and then the little flanges, they're called I think floor flanges. Um, once I've sprayed all them, I'll just set them straight down. And then when I go over them with the spray paint, I'm just gonna do a nice dusting. I'll show you that in a moment. Just let those soak in. These, by the way, are about four inches, maybe four inches on the nut once they are screwed in tightly. The cool thing is we can adjust them. I can't, Brian will. Um, adjust them <laughs> once we know what height our counter is. Grab this. Thank you. We're doing the floater counter, well, cupboards, because we spent so much time working on our floor that we were like, how could we see more of our floor? It seems like such a shame that we did all that work to that floor and it's just gonna get covered up by counters. So, the floater. That's how it came into existence. Floater, not just in in Western Hemisphere toilets. <laughs> <laughs> this floater you can actually eat off of. just like that, black pipes. Yay! It's pretty simple. Just a little dust of spray paint, 
don't get too heavy on the spray. And then we shone a light on them to make sure we got all the angles, but it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be under a counter, so they're perfect enough for us. Seventeeners to put our coats on. Come on. We started building the bottom frame for the kitchen cabinets out of two by fours joined together using pocket screws. Considering the entire kitchen cupboard will appear to be floating, we couldn't risk using smaller dimension lumber to build the bottom frame because it may sag over time. The Craig jig makes drilling pocket holes to the right depth and angle of breeze. What's cool is the resulting joint is pretty strong. Nice. Our table's a little warped, so we've got a more straight piece of plywood underneath to make sure that our wood lines up properly because the first round did not. <laughs> Yeah. Basically, our flanges are going to sit somewhere. They'll be on the other side. This is the underbelly, but they'll basically sit. Oh, I'm so awkward. Basically, the flanges are gonna sit somewhere in here and on here. That's it. So we're, we're planning on having these set four inches from the edge here, because this is actually gonna be the part that faces the ground, and that'll give us some toe kick area. And then the nipples will be put on there, and then another flange will be put directly onto the floor and then screwed into the, through the subfloor and everything. Show them which piece is a nipple so they don't think you're a weirdo. That thing's a nipple. Which it makes sense now looking at it. <laughs> oh. ah! I didn't screw it all together. It still needs to dry a little bit. So from from this level, imagine this being upside down right now because the floor is actually right here. And these aren't screwed on yet. They're still drying and they're still a little tacky. Uh, but just to kind of give you a visual, this here to the floor will be four inches. And then the edge of the nipple, these are three and a half inch nipples, together, once they're screwed in together, the floor flange and the nipple will be four inches tall. And the edge of the outside diameter will be four inches from either of the edge, which will be ample toe kick space so that we're not stubbing our toes on everything. Cabinets generally have toe kicks that are built in. Most people don't notice them because, well, heck, they're three or four inches off the ground. So this is what we're doing to have a floating counter because we might do some like cool lighting or something underneath, who knows. That even gives Brian enough room for his big canoe shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Table saw is unplugged. We ran out of surfaces, so this is the surface. <laughs> now we're gonna countersink these puppies. the prowl for a cobalt bit. We gotta pre-drill uh, some holes for our low furring strip to set the counter on. You find it? I think I found one. This one should work. It's uh, the 1 8 inch. Matches our screws. 
Yeah, so even though it's got a self-tapping drill bit, I found that pre-drilling uh, pilot holes makes it so much easier and faster. To the bus. Right now, we're just measuring four inches up for our attachment points um, so we can pre-drill the holes in the metal. So then we can stick up another furring strip and then the counter will rest on top of that. Well, not really the counter top, but <laughs> the cupboards. That's dead nut. It's dead nut. Perfect length. How exciting is this? That is really gonna look so sharp. So nice. It's gonna be so nice. Sharp, sharp, sharp. Feeling sharp. Oh yeah, thank you. Feeling sharp. Oh, those are sharp. Yes. Speaking of sharp. Can I do it? Yeah. Are you gonna let me do it? Yeah. All right. Just get it started. You get it started. And the next one? Yep. Start them off? Yeah. Make sure you like the right thing. Cool. So, All right, now this one, the final. Ooh. Go Big for all it. the way. Ooh, ooh. Just strip it. Oh, baby. Oh, no. I like to put him on the edge of his seat. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> he, loves, he loves watching me do screw holes. Oh, yeah, I stripped the shit out of that one. Make sure it goes in there straight, Garcia. I am. The whole thing, okay? It's pretty good. There are purple gloves. Oh, yeah, straight. Oh, didn't like that one. There we go. <laughs> Now that it's quiet. <laughs> I have composed my thoughts. <laughs> All right. So there we go. We got the base happening Ooh. in there. Drop that, looks, that base. Looks really, <laughs> drop that base. It's all about that base. All right. So. Drop it like it's hot, boom, boom. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's so cool. One of them a little longer than the other. Maybe. I think it's that one. Tighten it up there. Purple. Ooh, that's a little closer. Yeah. That board was warped the whole time though. So that board was warped. We might be able to just like- Hammer just, time it. Well, it's, it's not, not even taking hammer time. It's just like, you just freaking put it on there and it's good, yeah, essentially. It's fine. Call it good? Yeah. Or should- well, Both of them are kind of raised up like that. No, only that one. No, the other side was too. I was just looking at it. <laughs> Oh, there's a bend in there. No, they're both kind of rised up. Well, this one's well, this one's got bark and stuff on it. This one's flush right there, dead nut oh, flush. Dead nut. And that one's up by just a little bit. Well, once you screw everything in, I don't think it's gonna be just fine. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, that's really good. He did it. He's doing it. Oh, that's slick. No, I have not. Well, this one time, <laughs> took a took a ride on a porcelain seat. Oh, <laughs> here we go. We're drilling holes in the floor. This is crazy. 
I know I already into the floor in spots, but it seems crazy. Into it, yeah. like right in the middle center playing field. Yeah. That all does an amazing job. Yeah, you'd think that it would do more. line up. There's All right, those. I see it lined on this one. There's those. Hard to see. It doesn't all have I'm lined up on all of these. I'm lined up on all of those. Cool. All right. Uh, I think if we push it just a hair this way, then they'll be centered. Looks good here. Those are perfect. Yep. All right, let's see if this little universal Woo! joint. So we got a little universal joint on there. It's basically a little joint a rooney so that we can get in there at a weird angle without having to unscrew it. Cool. So it's a little floppy to start with. Oh, it's gonna work. See, that one's a lot easier. You see that angle on there? It's not as... Hey there guys. So yesterday we screwed these screws, the roofing screws. We use them on the perimeter of our skylights. You watch that video right here, um, which worked really good for our skylights. And we thought this would look super cute in the feet of these. Plus they got rubber washers, so they wouldn't like squeak or rub around or bump out. So, um, when I was putting one of them in yesterday, I cracked the wood floor just a little bit. Brian says either one of us would have done it. It wasn't just like my terrible technique. So today we are actually gonna replace them with proper wood screws. These are actually a good fit for these holes. Um, Brian will explain more about why the screw is better. So we're gonna replace them. I think gold would look super cute with the black. What do you think? I totally think, and to elaborate more on what you're talking about, so these deck screws here with that uh, smooth shank right here, what it'll allow it to do is pull the flange down and the more aggressive wood screw uh, thread will grip better into the subfloor beneath the barn wood floor. And so it'll cause that to pull that floor up and pull the flange down versus using this screw, which is actually a metal roofing screw. The thread is not as aggressive on this. So it has a probability of maybe stripping out the wood. And in this case, because there's no smooth shank right here, it's actually pulling the wood of the barn wood up, which is what caused the crack. So regardless of who was screwing it right there, that board was destined to crack and this should fix that problem for the future boards. <laughs> you live, you learn, right? I can't hold it anymore. <laughs> can't hold it. <laughs> that was a bad side. That made me sweat, actually. I was like holding the camera out like this and I wish I could selfie the camera to show you how heavy this thing is, but it's probably like 20 pounds. The camera? 10. No, I think it's about five pounds. It's five pounds. Maybe. But that was like pretty hardcore shoulder lift. So we're doing a one for one. We're now backing out all the black screws and then we're gonna slide in one of these gold screws instead uh, just to switch them all out. And we really want this to be bomb proof. So we're making some adjustments and that's what you gotta do. Like if it doesn't work the first time, it's not a failure that's going to end it all. It's like, oh, 
that didn't work out how I thought it might have, maybe I should do something different and just uh, adjust. And that's part of building a schoolie. Like there's no right or wrong way of doing things. There's good, better, and best ways. And so just figure out what's good, find out what's better, see what's best, and then pick one. Yeah. <laughs> That was nicer. Yeah. Hey, how about this? Uh, let me know when you back one out, and then um, Ooh, and then this one back I'll in. follow up with this bit, and I'll put them back in. Here's one to put in. So as you back them out, I'll uh, put them in. All right. I, I just, just told you. I know. I know. I'll just. I play by the rules. I know. I know. I mean, with all the distraction in the world right now and um, the media basically like pinning people on people and all that garbage, doing something like this for yourself is probably the best mental health thing you could possibly do is prepare yourself to live a bomb proof lifestyle and take care of yourself. Be more self-reliant because I don't know, it kind of seems like shit's going down and though they're opening everything back up, there's a lot of drama happening in this world. And um, yeah, we need to be able to take care of ourselves. So this is our first step to self-reliance and um, it's actually one of the most fun and fulfilling things we've probably ever done. <sighs> Look at that. So that is the the bottom of the island area right here that I'm standing on. You think we both could stand on it? Yeah, for sure. Jump up on there. Build it bomb proof. Pretty, pretty solid. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. The whole bus is shaking. Alright, Weary. Alright, I think this is gonna be strong enough to be a counter. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. These are just our knee pads. Yep. We took an exercise mat, cut it in half, and made two knee pads. Two knee pads. Okay, so next up, now that we have this island part, so give you some perspective, there's the door, there's the driver's seat, passenger seat's gonna go there, couch and a couch. Oh, probably a wood stove or something, maybe right around here, it should be nice. Um, so the island, nice and strong. This is where the sink's gonna be, that little cardboard cutout. And then that cooktop is off center. It's probably gonna be over this way just a little bit. Where do you think that's gonna go? Something like that? Ah, it's approximate, it's, it's, a, it's a cardboard cutout. What do you think? <laughs> I'm in there. So obviously it won't be on the floor, it'll be up about this height here. But we're gonna put, also put some more of those uh, flanges and nipples underneath me here to float this edge here. And then right over here, we're going to start with the corner cabinets. And then we're gonna have a little utility closet going vertically. And then right here is what's gonna be right there? The fridge. The refrigerator, awesome. We just ordered it. Toast Should be in next week or something. So let's get this part attached and so that we can start seeing what it looks like in here. What do you think? I'm so into it. This is really awesome. I love that it's a floater. That's so exciting. You love floaters. I love floaters. It's cool because um, like there's parts of this floor that are absolutely beautiful that I still want to see. You're going to still want to see. Like when I'm laying on the floor doing yoga or something, I can just like look over and be like, oh, look at the floor. <laughs> so this is so great. Really great. <laughs> so exciting. All right, let's install it. Fair. Nice work, us. Nice work, us. Now we totally understand why some people don't wear gloves because it's hot. It's pretty it's warm. Heck. It's pretty warm. I actually reverted to my old ones that have a hole in the thumb because they're like less insulated than my brand new ones. <laughs> they're hot. Hot, hot, hot. 
We try to keep putting them on, but I feel like all day I'm like on again, off again, on again, off again, on again. Off again. I think it really depends on like what we're doing as to whether or not we wear gloves. Like screwing in a screws, like it's fairly benign. Like you're screwing in a screw, but whenever we're using power tools and stuff, we try to put put gloves on. Or if we're like yeah. moving a bunch of wood to prevent splinters and stuff. I don't so. want splinters. She doesn't want splinters, folks. I also don't want to break my nails. So there's that. Make sure we're not poking through the bottom. How the new screws do? New screws did great! Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> so what I liked about the new screws, come check this out, come check this out closer. So here's a cross section of what the floor flange is and the nipple with the screw. This is a one and a half inch uh, deck screw what that looks like going into the wood. So notice that it didn't protrude past it. We still had a little bit of room. I did check anyway, just cause it kind of sucks in real nice and tight. Uh, but that's essentially what it looks like right about there. Four times, eight times per each. What are you doing? Well, the, they went on real nice and smooth, but you know what? This is actually gonna install this way. So we actually put these on the wrong side. So we're gonna put them on the other side now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be good at everything. And when you're not, you're not. And that's fine. Not everything's gonna run smooth. That's yeah. the best part. So something that keeps coming up in the schoolie groups is this, like my family and friends think I'm totally crazy for doing this and we totally understand. I think a lot of people we know probably think we're insane for taking on a project like this, first of all. And then second of all, wanting to live in it, people just like don't always get the concept of going tiny. Like, how could you live in something so small? Um, you know, why would you want to live in a vehicle? And there's so many questions about it. And I guess something that keeps coming up for Brian and I is self-reliance. We really mm -hmm. want to be more self-reliant. And that's important to us. We've seen a lot um, traveling to different countries. We've seen countries that, you know, we're on an island and you go to the grocery store one day and there's like hardly any food on the shelves. And then you go the next day and it's abundant yeah. and there's millions of people or thousands or hundreds or whatever. There's a lot of people in that grocery store and people are literally fighting over food. And this is before this whole crazy pandemic. That was kind of a little hint for us last summer. We were like, whoa, things are kind of crazy. Like what would this island do if ships stop coming and Stuff. What's crazy about all of that is back in 2017, when we first quit our jobs and everything, people thought we were crazy to, to go out and branch out and do our own thing. And now there's more and more people who are like, wow, doing something on my own, you know, starting a business online, yeah. building a schoolie, doing anything that you're relying, rather than relying on, oh, I've got to go to work for a job, like yeah. doing your own thing, that's always appealed to us. And so yeah. it's, I think that there's like a huge awakening happening and a huge disruptions going on right now all across the world that's causing businesses to shut down the traditional brick and mortar style. But what that's doing is it's forcing people to, and businesses that are trying to stay afloat to go into the online sense and start doing video conferencing so that they can get work done and still stay afloat. So it's like what we were originally told that we were crazy about. Now everybody's like, wait, I need to find something that I can do online and work on my own sort of thing. Right. And I think like something that's becoming so obvious is our fundamental needs need to be met. Like yeah. people want safety and security and the way the economy is going and the global pandemic. Like, it's, and people want good food. People want like good food. Good, healthy food. Yeah, people want good food, people want shelter, and they want to be safe. And nothing about what we're seeing on the media, at least, feels safe. So for us, we just turn that crap off and put our nose down and we get to work. And this has been one of the most satisfying, fulfilling projects because 
we're learning new skills every day. Shoot, if things really hit the fan, we'll be happy that we have this and having all those skills that you're acquiring. So really, is it us, the crazy schooly people who are insane for wanting to live more smart, more simple, because it's actually becoming necessary? Or is it everybody else who's feeding into the drama and, you know, ruining their lives over it? Just saying, something to think about. We're ready to install this next one. Got double guns, choo, choo. drill guns. <laughs> Bug out bus. Bug out bus. Bug out bus. Who's joining us with the bug out buses? Bug out bus. One drill gun. Oh, oh, oh. Two drill guns. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's like the count, right? I got it. I got it. Did you guys get it? <sighs> Why? What? <laughs> look at that. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> look at it. Change of plans. <sighs> That's what happens when you're building a schoolie. Plans always are being changed. And that's cool because creativity sinks in. And you're like, oh my gosh, what if we did this? So what are we yeah. doing? Well, we realized once we got going here that this corner was kind of going to be wasted under the counter. Corner cupboards, not so great. Sometimes they're problems. More problems than good. Mm -hmm. So, Brian had this great idea to extend the bathroom out a little bit. So We're going to move the wall. I did it! Right on! Alright, cut a chunk out of this wall. <laughs> so now we're gonna start cutting the walls for here. This wall, right here, this wall here, and this wall here. And then we'll do our uh, plumbing and electrical all from the other side uh, inside the bathroom. So Brian is just getting going on the curve. Let's go. Bird footprints. <laughs> the jigsaw. Whenever you recognize that you need to start squinting with one eye, you've got a foot problem. You need to make sure your foot is pushed down. In one of the last videos, you would have seen me squinting or heard about me squinting because the board was vibrating so much I couldn't see my line. It's because my foot wasn't down. So I place my thumb either back here or here, making sure that my fingers are well away from that. Cool. Cool. Whoa! Okay, my cut line, still not perfect, but the cut line is a lot better and the saw moves much more smooth with the foot down the way you're supposed to move it. There's a good chance our template's not perfect. Look, I didn't saw it like that on purpose. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect enough. Perfect enough for us. All right, so we're about to, we just screwed in this wall and we're about to screw in this wall. We need to get both of these walls up because the refrigerator's coming in. This is gonna be like the little uh, bike vacuum closet or whatever. And then we need to figure out what we're doing with the cabinets on that side. And the top of the cabinets might meet up with this wall over here. So we need this wall here so that we can actually do that. Yeah, yeah. Just so we can know exactly what we're doing with like our cleaning cupboard and then the countertops originally we had like a big pantry thing up here, but the bottom space didn't really make sense. So this is going to be so much better because now we have more room for our vanity. Oh. Whew, 
It's getting warm in here. It is. <laughs> Holy smokes. We're trying to cap off or seal in this under counter region. Yeah. Um, so Brian's been cutting and recutting this little sliver and he just came up with a really good idea. Yeah, so uh, we're going to uh, unscrew the top edge and then after we unscrew the top edge, that's gonna give us just a little bit of room because it's not able to make the turn even though it's the right height because of the edges. So we're gonna unscrew that and then put it on screw it in and this is going to prevent like dirt and stuff from getting into the back edge of where the reclaimed barnwood floor goes towards the wall towards the expansion joint back there technical whatever that means we're basically going to just put this piece of wood under the counter against the wall now we're cutting a skinny piece to go along the edge of our frame for the bottom of the counter Brian calls it the skirt, so we're cutting the skirt. <laughs> Our skirt simply just needs to be the width of the 2x4, which is only about an inch and a half thick. Um, and then we're going to round the edges because of the counter being floating. Um, if your foot goes under it and your ankle hits, you don't want that edge to be rough. So we're going to route it and then we're going to sand it and make it nice and smooth. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> I didn't even cut the table. It's a good looking skirt. Perfect. Nice. That worked. Good. All right, so we're gonna test the round over. We got the router set with a round over bit and we're gonna see how it works. I made it rounded. Cool, good job. I'd rather work on the beautiful little details like this than measure stuff. Measuring stuff just like makes me be like. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful. Aaron applied a nice healthy bead of glue followed by smoothing it out to get good coverage. After that, we put the half inch plywood on top and stapled it down using the pneumatic stapler. In most instances, we would just screw down the boards, but because this is gonna be one solid unit on the bottom, we went ahead and glued it and used staples instead because it'd be faster to apply. And in the long run, it'll hold together just fine. 